So like I said last week, and I'm saying this week, we're transitioning into the present, um, the present form or the, the middle part, if you will, of this investigation, which we cover in the present day. As we've said before, Babylon was originally started out as a city and a tower, as you see on the left-hand side in the past. But when that tower and that effort was thwarted and that tower was destroyed and the people that were working on that tower received languages, according to Genesis 11, um, and now they couldn't communicate with each other. They went back to the land from which they came to work on the tower and they took back with them all of the practices that they were doing collectively as a people group, as well as the gods they were worshiping collectively. They took back to their own lands in their own languages, worshiping those same gods, practicing those same practices just with their own language, right? So sometimes the language changes into how they refer to those gods now because they speak something different. So we've been tracking all throughout history, all across the plane of the earth, all the different cultures, how that those same practices and those same gods were worshipped and it's always the same. The Hebrews were different. The Hebrews that were the ones that were called out of those practices and to start doing the behaviors and the practices of the actual creator which leads to love and good things as opposed to destruction and death. We're still investigating those practices and behaviors of Babylon. And this episode, we're actually going to be looking at the pyramids and the temples of ancient Babylon and how they've actually are still being um, represented and presented even to this day. And so that's what our presentation will be about tonight. So if we look here, this is the, many people already know what this is. It's actually a, a well-known replica of the Tower of Babel. And um, it's half built and it's a very, very iconic design. This is actually the European Union headquarters, specifically for the, the 12 nations of the European Union. Um, so I just think it's fascinating that once you actually have a moment where it, there's a group of nations that actually want to come together under one ideal banner, under one economic system, to try to help each other grow, this is the building they choose. It's pretty funny, isn't it? It's pretty obvious to me, if we, if since especially if you've seen the previous seven parts of this. But it's going to be even more obvious, guys. We're actually going to be looking at the pyramids and temples of ancient times as they morphed into modern times and their modern mm -hmm. representations. This is actually a place I personally have had a chance to go visit. This is um, in Belize. This is Zuna Tunic, and this is actually an old Mayan temple area. And this picture that you see on screen here is actually at the top of a mountain. It's it's because of the, the angle of the picture, it's not entirely easy to see, but we actually had to get on a bus and we had to drive up a bus halfway up this mountain and then get out of the bus. I was with this tour group. Then we got out of the bus so that we could walk the rest of the way up onto this hilltop to where Zuna Tunic was. And as you can see in the pictures here, this is a, it's a, it's an overall complex and there's many different parts to this complex and much of it was not even excavated. So what you do see is just been partially excavated. Lots of pyramids and temples on top of a mountain, at the top of a mountain. And guys, what you're seeing, it looks like dirt. I know it looks like dirt at this point, but this is the actual brick, the uh, modern day brick and, mar and mortar that the archeologists in the 1960s came in and actually brick and mortared over the pure white limestone of the original Mayan temples. And in fact, you see that this, um, you see this grass in between all the temples. I, I can, you know, it doesn't, it's hard to, to see it from the picture, but I can give you my sworn testimony because I walked on it and I have a picture of me that I'm going to show you in a minute walking on this. On this grass, guys, it was as flat as a tabletop. This, this uh, grass was actually growing over white limestone brought blocks, huge white limestone blocks, right? Same thing with all the brick and mortar on these temples you see that looks like they're just dirt temples. That's the actual covering that was put over them to supposedly protect the actual white limestone, massive megalithic blocks that made up these temples on top of a mountain, right? And I asked the, uh, the, the tour guide who was actually a descendant of the Mayans, so he claims, I asked him, I said, where'd they get all the limestone? Is there a quarry in the valley nearby? And he's like, no, we don't, we've never found a limestone quarry anywhere nearby. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so it's even more mysterious. This is an amazing uh, place in Belize. It's actually, if you go to the right of these temples that you're looking at and go down into the valley on the other side of this mountaintop, it's actually the border of Guatemala, excuse me, Guatemala. And uh, it was pretty funny while we were there uh, on the tour, um, 
we had actually thankfully gotten to see most of the structures on the tour and we even went up to the top of the big one you see in the distance um but as we were finishing the tour we heard gunfire and it was um then we saw running across this courtyard here we saw a bunch of uh belizean soldiers and they ran across the the structures and down into the valley to, towards the border and then we heard more gunfire and so that's when the tour guy was like okay everyone back to the bus <laughs> it was uh pretty interesting because they apparently they defend the guatemalan border with belize heavily because there's a lot of drug trafficking so they just shoot without question they just shoot anyone that tries to cross the border so this was uh, right at the border of guatemala here in belize it's a beautiful temple area that is beautiful from you know the overgrowth but what we're looking at is actually quite horrific and again like i said these ridiculous little uh stones that you see all this nasty gray stone and brick and mortar this is not the original stonework this was the i'm going to show you the original stonework because they left part of it undone on the backside. this was what the archaeologists came and did to cover it up like they literally came in and covered over these amazing hieroglyphs and the white um, limestone that formed these pyramids and these temples yeah miss marcia you're right that's that's what i was thinking they literally are trying to hide what's there so this is not typical behavior for archaeologists to come in and literally deface something they claimed was 2000 years old by putting modern day nasty brick and mortar over it or stones and mortar. So it was like, I, I was angry actually. I was actually, cause I'd literally traveled a long way to get here. Right. And I was angry to realize that, that I wasn't actually being able to see the original temples that that was here. And so in fact, if you guys look here on the, on the ground, if you see between the larger structures here on the ground in the middle is, is an actual altar. So this is um, one of the altars that they use to sacrifice humans. This is the Mayans, you guys remember? So this is the practices of Babylon. So these temples specifically, as you can see in the behind the, the stone altar in the middle of the picture, the bigger temple in the back here, this bigger stone structure that has a stepped stone structure that goes up to the top and a flat area at the top. This is a traditional ziggurat design that you see all over the world. And I'm going to show you that tonight. This is one of the synonymous practices and designs for Babylon, for the, for the kingdom of Babylon that was spread across the plain of the earth after the tower fell. So if we keep, this is the, the, the pillar, or excuse me, the altar I was telling you about. And that's what the actual uh, tour guide told us. He said, yeah, that's an altar where they used to, to kill people. <laughs> he wasn't even shy about it, right? So as you see in the picture here, this is a kind of a broader view of the courtyard area. Um, and it's just, uh, it was a, an entire complex. And in fact, this is a more modern picture. And these, um, this was in, this picture here is more modern. This is uh, taken in the last couple of years. But when I went there, it was in 2013. Um, and the pictures that I'm going to show you from my trip, are, they don't, they're not good quality. I apologize. Uh, I didn't have a good camera. Um, <clears throat> but these little structures here on the left hand side those actually were still covered in grass they had not excavated those yet nor had they covered them up it was just all covered in grass guys i was standing in the center of this courtyard and i looked down and i saw that i was standing on a thin layer of grass that had overgrown this pure super flat white limestone floor the entire top of the mountain had been paved with white limestone and it was super flat all these structures that you're seeing were made of limestone, not this, this ugly stone and rock and mortar. I asked the, the, the tour guide, wait a minute, because I bent down and I, I actually pulled some of the grass up and he got mad at me and he was like, don't do that. Don't do that. And I was like, why are you guys covering up this beautiful limestone floor? That's like the size of two football fields in length and, and width. And he said, no, they, they just don't want to, they just don't want to disturb it. The grass protects it. And I'm like, are you, are you kidding me? <laughs> I was, I was like trying not to be super angry, but I'm sitting here looking at this amazing feat. And so then I asked him, I said, well, wait a minute, where did the top of the mountain go? Who, where did, is there a large like pile off in the valley where you can see where they took all the dirt? And they, he goes, ah, we don't know. And I'm like, <laughs> so basically they cut off the top of a mountain, paved it in limestone, then took up these megalithic bricks to the top to build pyramids so they could do practices and rituals and sacrifices. It was insane, guys. And as you see at the bottom of the screen here, these little bitty uh, 
elevated surfaces off the off the floor. He said that's where they actually uh, sacrifice the children. By the way, this is probably a PG PG thirteen show tonight, guys. This will not be safe for YouTube. I know the, the YouTube people are being like, they, every time I upload a video, they want you to fill out this this questionnaire that basically says, are you talking about sensitive or harmful topics? Yeah, we're talking about child sacrifice tonight, so it may be harmful to your, your false religion. So this is the backside of one of the structures that actually is, um, you can see the original limestone work of the hieroglyphs, uh, this Many of you may already recognize this dragon with his tongue sticking out. That's Quetzalcoatl, the flying serpent, which was one of the gods the Mayans worshipped. Yeah, it's the dragon, right? Um, the flying serpent that wants you to sacrifice humans. It's the, the dragon, just a different form, a different culture. But uh, so this was the same. And I actually asked him about these gods on this on these. Uh, look how look how beautiful it could be. The entire place could look like this this little portion that's been um, not covered over, basically. So I asked the tour guide and I was like, I said, what, what, what are these, what do these gods represent? He goes, well, some of them, the Quetzalcoatl, you know, represents the, the snake God and others represent the, the wind gods and the sun gods. And I'm like, oh, okay. So it sounds very familiar, right? Like we've been studying with ancient Egypt, ancient Greece, ancient India. I said, you know, I heard something and I was calling his bluff, right? I said, I heard that uh, the Mayan gods promise to return in the future. Is that true? From what you know of your of your ancient culture? And he said, yes, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> and then he just, you know, like went off to, to talk to the rest of the group. So I literally got it from his mouth, right? Some, supposedly someone that's a descendant of the Mayans, which is why he said he, because I talked to him on the bus. It was like a two-hour bus ride, just this, just this mountain. I talked to him on the bus ride going up there. And he said this is why he wanted to, to do this tour and volunteer with this company, because he was an actual descendant of the Mayans, so he claims. So, yeah, he, in their culture, claims that these gods are supposed to come back. Um, <clears throat> so more examples of a little uncovered part they left. As you can see, that where the archaeologists covered over it with a nasty rock instead of all this white limestone. Um, this is a, a bigger picture of the backside of the tallest mountain. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty interesting, and we got to walk all the way up inside. It has it has like rooms that go inside the actual top of it and everything. Did you guys know that people actually? It's crazy. It breaks my heart. People actually schedule tours to this particular place, but so they get married. Like you can find like wedding photos of people inside this temple, this big one. Um, at sunset with these nice artistic photos and their wedding dress and stuff and their and their tux like people taking wedding photos at this place is crazy if like they have no clue what this place used to be and what it used to you know it's crazy um so this is a little bit more example of a, just one little portion they for whatever reason they left undone i have no clue why but are they left uncovered and you get to see the original ornate design guys think about this because complex is massive and if all of it looked like this like this is just a massive complex. Now I put the arrows. <clears throat> excuse me, one second. I put the arrows on the right hand side here. This little what looks like a little bluff. That's actually more that's not been uncovered. Okay, so this to the left of the arrows is this main um, raised stepped pyramid in the center of this complex. And you can see there's grass grown over it on two sides and on the top of it. And this was also an altar as well at the top of that of that place in the center of the whole complex um this the the stone structure that looks like it's broken down behind it that's because it is broken down that used to be what they said was the governor's house and i'll explain about that here in just a few minutes and then you also have where the arrows are on the other side of this little grassy bluff which is again it's just uncovered it's just overgrowth uh, that there's actual more pyramid stuff over there but on the other side of it between the trees you can't really see from this picture and i didn't, I didn't actually take a picture um, of this particular area, but we walk back in there and there's like a little bitty stadium back there between this bluff and between the other side of the trees and where these stone structures where they had seats and there were these little like, it was actually a place where the, the tour guide described that they were actually playing a version of soccer. Okay. So it's, they would take um, loose branches and they would tie them together in a ball. And it was much bigger than a soccer ball. Imagine more like a, like a beach ball. 
and they would they would have teams. So the competing tribes of the Mayans would take this 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 global globular looking stick ball that they made, and only using their feet they would kick it. And they would have to put as a as a as a as an ante. I don't know what exactly the word you would say, but there's two tribes competing against each other. And this was a festival. This was a part of a game that they did to worship the gods. So one of the tribe or both of the tribes had to like pony up one of their virgin girls. And it was the tribe who, who won their virgin girl that they offered up would be the one that would be sacrificed. And they said it got highly competitive to the point where they would start beating each other up because they wanted to win so bad to please the gods. Meanwhile, they got two girls tied up on the side wondering what their fate's going to be. Depends on who wins the soccer game. You guys wonder why soccer is so big all across the world? Why it's promoted so heavily? It's one of the most boring games you've ever seen in your life. I used to play soccer, by the way, so I know I've offended a lot of people right now by saying that, but I used to play soccer. <laughs> anyway, it's boring. Um, here's the governor's temple at the back, like I said before. He said when they excavated, uh, it was so it was so broken down. It was actually a hazard, and they couldn't they couldn't have tour groups come through there because of uh, being dilapidated and being a, a safety structure hazard. Parts of it were falling down. Um, but when they actually removed it to make it safe for people to walk through this place and look at it, they found children's bodies inside the walls. Yep. This is me in 2013. And uh, this is me. I, I apologize. Like I said, camera quality is bad. I didn't have a good camera. But this was me walking through there. That was Zuna Tunic in Belize. Okay, guys, we're going to go to Teotihuacan in Mexico. And this is a more famous and well-known uh, temples of the Mayans and the Aztecs. And this was is Mexico, of course. Uh, this is the Temple of the Sun. It's an entire, uh, you know, many of you guys have seen that you know, exposés about this on the History Channel and other places. This is a huge complex um, that was just basically like it's massive. I mean, this is one of the bigger pyramids in the world. So, so far that they've discovered like the Pyramid of Giza. And as you can see, all of these, all of these are stepped pyramids. These are not the pointed pyramids. Okay. These are the stepped pyramids. People are going to screenshot me making that little thing you'll, you'll see it by next by like two days from now you'll see memes of me it was Ill illuminati confirmed um because i made the little pointy signs with my fingers anyway guys take note of the step pyramids this is what we're looking at tonight okay these specific design was for high places for child sacrifice can't there was no there was no stairwell and there's no steps there's no uh presentation altar on the pointed pyramids, the more conical shaped, or that what they would call the smooth side pyramids. But these stepped ziggurat style pyramids, these are for sacrifice. These are the high places. This is a massive complex. Look how many stepped pyramids surround the big one, which is a step pyramid. These are massive, massive complexes, guys. Lots and lots of effort into the worship of this religion of Babylon all across the world. Don't let the history books lie to you, right? The history books, this right here destroys the history books for them to try to tell you that the, oh, the Mayans, you know, were indigenous people from over here. And then it's the, they, you know, we don't, they don't really know where they, uh, the Mayans claim that these were already built when they got here. And I'm like, guys, it, regardless, the, the same religion was being worshiped. The, the Mayans partook in this religion, whether it was there when they got there or not, they partook. It was the same religion. They were worshiping the sun god, the snake gods, just like all the other religions, all the other cultures. This is a massive pyramid, guys. It's a huge point of tourism in Mexico. Temple of the sun is what they call it. Literally, temple of the sun. Sun worship. Um, we're going to jump across the plain of the earth, go from Mexico to Iraq. This is actually outside of Nineveh, near Mosul. This is an old ziggurat. This is actually an older picture because a lot of these have been destroyed uh, since the Iraq War of 2003. So this was a, an older picture from the 1930s. Just to show you that ziggurats are all over the place. The step pyramids are all over the place. 
This is another famous step pyramid of the, that's literally called the Babylonian ziggurat in Iraq. This one, did you guys realize that there were ziggurats in Israel? You guys remember when Joshua and um, Hezekiah and Josiah, you remember when they said they went out to destroy the high places that had been set up all over Israel? You remember how in Jeremiah, Yahweh says that the high places to Baal were as many as the streets of Jerusalem? This was uh, one of the few that was left over over time near Petra in Israel. Ziggurat, Step Pyramid. This is in North Korea. We're going to jump further, right? We went from the Middle East all the way to North Korea. Still ziggurats, still raised pyramids. Here's an entire valley full of them in North Korea, guys. In Kogurio. I think I'm saying that right. Kogurio. Did you guys know that there was ziggurat raised pyramids <laughs> in, in North Korea? An entire field of them. Here, now we'll go to Japan, except in Japan, it's off the coast and it's underwater. This is just one of them. It's underwater off the coast. Oh, you guys recognize this? Does this look familiar? This, this broken down temple? You guys you remember we talked about the, you know, the bull? This is the Apis Bull of Egypt. It's also a famous, the bull of, of Babylon, Akkad, and Canaanites. It's a representation of Baal. It's got the, the sun in between his horns, just like Isis used to wear, just like Astora used to wear, just like Baal used to wear, just like Pharaoh used to wear. Yeah, same stuff, guys. Even in Japan, they're worshiping the same religion. Here's a diving exploration about a huge ziggurat that's also underwater off the coast of Japan. Massive, massive temples. This one was like super big. It may be as big as um, the Giza Pyramid or the Temple of the Sun in Mexico. This is a massive, massive pyramid. These are the steps they're walking on, or they're floating around, if you will. This is a big one. Does that look familiar? It's a ziggurat style pyramid with a flat top. Why? Because they were they offered human sacrifice. This was a part of the religion. The same religion everywhere. You guys remember that like even to this day, Japan's flag is the sun because they used to worship the emperor as the sun. Sun worship. Same concept. We're gonna go to China now. So now here in China, this is fascinating. Did you guys know? There are over one, according to archaeologists, there's over 100 unexplored pyramids in China. And this one you're looking at, they think could be as big as the Temple of the Sun in Mexico or the Giza Pyramid in Egypt in Cairo. This is just out in the field. No one's explored it. It's got tons of overgrowth. China, the Chinese government won't let people excavate it or explore it. There's hundreds of them in China that no one's ever been able to look at. Why are they all built the same way? It's a raised pyramid, a flat top. This is someone, as you can see, walking next to one of them in China with these massive megalithic stones. Who lifted those? This is a gentleman standing in front of one, trying to use his ox to just grow some food. Here's an aerial photography from, from Google of one of the pyramids in China, massive pyramid. Here's two next to each other in a big field. I even gave you the coordinates if you want to look it up. Massive, massive, China, massive Chinese pyramids. Oh, here's a whole bunch of them. A whole bunch of raised ziggurats in the field in China. Undisturbed. No one's looked at them. Guys, did you realize Australia also has ziggurats? <laughs> Can you believe this? All the way to Australia. This is in Balandine, Australia. This is a smaller one. We go over to India. They've got the really fancy ones. India was super famous for their artwork, guys. They just they they were they were extra. They were very much extra. Their pyramids and their temples. 
um, so artistic. All their artwork about their you know about the gods and the representations of them is just very very artistic. But that was uh, this is one of their famous temples. Same design. Here's an older, much more older and bigger paleo, excuse me, uh, megalithic stone work um, ziggurat temple that's actually been uh, bricked over, as you can see in certain areas. This is a super, what they claim is one of the oldest in India. It's a massive ziggurat style temple. Go over to Cambodia. We're still in Southeast Asia, right? Go over to Cambodia. Southeast Asia, that's kind of far away from, from Babylon, right? Isn't it? That was pretty far away from Mesopotamia. Yeah, same design, same temples, just like we see in Central America and South America. Same thing we see in Egypt. Same thing we see in Turkey. Same thing we see in, in uh, Sumeria. It's all the same, guys. Go to Kazakhstan. Now we're in southern, just below Russia, right? So we go to Kazakhstan, more towards Iran. One of the oldest ziggurat style pyramids and as well as some remains of another one in Kazakhstan even. So guys, this is going to be a unique moment because I never in the last two and a half years, I haven't quoted from Jasher. Just like you saw me quote from Josephus and from other historians like Homer and different places. As we look at what history thought people from history that lived back in the days, what they thought from their mindset. I'm not claiming Jasher is 100 percent true. But I'm going to tell you what, whoever wrote this, the book of Jasher, this was their perspective of the events in their mind, what they thought, true, whether true or not, I'm not sure. But just to show you, to, to, to give you a, um, an ancient perspective on what I experienced when I went to Zuna Tunich and they told me that they had put children in the walls of these temples and of this governor's house. We read the same mindset, whether it's true or not, doesn't matter. We read the same mindset of the author as he explains Jasher 77, 15 through 20. It says in verse 15, the taskmasters of Egypt did so in those days as Pharaoh had ordered them. And whenever any deficiency was found in the children of Israel's measure of their daily bricks, the taskmasters of Pharaoh would go to the wives of the children of Israel and take infants of the children of Israel to the number of the bricks deficient. They would take them by force from their mother's laps and put them in the building instead of the bricks. While their fathers and mothers were crying over them and weeping when they heard the weeping voices of their infants in the wall of the building. And the taskmasters prevailed over Israel that the Israelites should place their children in the building so that a man might place his son in the wall and put mortar over him while his eyes wept over him and his tears ran down, his child, ran down upon his child. And the taskmasters of Egypt did so to the babes of Israel for many days and no one pitied or had compassion over the babes of the children of Israel. And the number of the children killed in the building was 270 some whom they had built upon instead of the bricks which had been left deficient by their fathers, and some whom they had drawn out dead from the building. We read in uh, Genesis Jubilees chapter 46 that a Assyrian who was a king of, uh, a king of Canaan who was from Assyria came in and overthrew Egypt's king at this point in history and started oppressing the Israelites. So Assyria is where Babylon was, and a Canaanite king came from Assyria. So basically, he was just just like the Babylonian Empire to choose kings from different different countries it ruled over. Canaanite king came to power over the empire. Babylon came, attacked Egypt during this part part of history where the Israelites were starting to be oppressed by the Egyptians. This uh, Jubilees chapter forty six, I believe. So. That would be the same practices that we see happening, worshiping the Baal God, worshiping the bull at these ziggurats and these types of practices. We see also, I found an actual correlation of history all the way across the Atlantic Ocean in Belize at a Mayan temple on top of a mountain deep into the mountains, like literally two hours drive into the mountains away from other cities. Same connection with the claim of ancient Egypt, or which would actually be the practices of ancient Babylon. So, guys, in Jeremiah 19, 4 through 5, it's, this is what Jeremiah prophesied uh, from Yahweh to the Israelites. It says, Because they've forsaken me and have made this an alien place and have burned sacrifices in it to other gods, that neither they nor their fathers nor the kings of Judah had ever known, 
because they have filled this place with the blood of the innocents and have built the high places of Baal to burn their sons in the fire as burnt offerings to Baal, a thing which I never commanded or spoke of, nor did it ever enter my mind. This is Yahweh speaking through Jeremiah. This was the practice of worshiping Baal. And it was the high places. They built high places. They didn't just go to a, a mountaintop. They, yeah, sure. It depends on the geography and the resources they had. They could easily put a little small shrine at the top of a mountain. But when it had an entire nation and all the king and all the resources devoted towards the worship of this religion, they built high places, which is why we see them all over the planet of the earth. They built high places. Second Kings 21, one through six, it says Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king. He reigned 55 years in Jerusalem and his mother's name was Hezvibah. I think I said that right. He did evil in the sight of the Lord, according to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord dispossessed before the sons of Israel. For he rebuilt the high places, which Hezekiah's father had destroyed. He erected altars for Baal and made an Asherah as Ahab king of Israel had done and worshiped all the host of heaven and served them. He built altars in the, in the house of the Lord of which the Lord had said in Jerusalem, I will put my name for he built altars for all the hosts of heaven and the two courts of the house of the Lord. He made his son pass through the fire. He practiced witchcraft and used divination and he dealt with mediums and spiritists. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. So this is Manasseh. He killed his own son, worshiping Baal. And he literally set up already inside the, the temple Solomon built. He set up altars to Baal. It's crazy guys. It's crazy. Like this is literally a dude that's not afraid to be struck by lightning. It's wild. Second Kings 23, 4 and 5 says, Then the king commanded Hilkiah, the high priest, and the priests of the second order and the doorkeepers to bring out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were for, made for Baal, for Asherah, and for all the host of heaven. And he burned them outside Jerusalem in the fields of the Kidron and carried their ashes to Bethel. He did away with the idolatrous priests whom the kings of Judah had a Pointed to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah and in the surrounding areas of Jerusalem. Also those who burn incense to Baal, to the sun and to the moon, to the constellations, to all the host of heaven. Do you guys catch that last part in verse 5? This was, an, this was all included in worshiping Baal, child sacrifice, worshiping the constellations, the Maserat, the host of heaven, the sun, the moon. This is why you see all those same personification of the ancient gods to those things, the sun, the moon god, all those different kinds of concepts, right? As well as, you know, the wind gods and the nature gods and the hosts of heaven, the constellations, the stars that they would consider would be gods. This is why in Deuteronomy, we have Yahweh tell us in Deuteronomy 4, 19 through 20, it says, Beware not to lift up your eyes to heaven and see the sun and the moon and the stars, all the hosts of heaven, and be drawn away and worship them and serve them those which the Lord your God has allotted to all the peoples under the whole heaven. But the Lord has taken you and brought you out of the iron furnace from Egypt. Why? Because this was also the practice of Egypt. It was the same practice of all the nations. Egypt wasn't special. They were also worshiping the hosts of heaven, the sun, moon, the stars, worshiping the Baal, the Apis bull. It was all the same practices they pulled away when they were dispersed from the fallen tower of Babel. This is why he's literally connecting these practices, just like we read from 2 Kings, and how it's idolatry. And he's saying, I pulled you out of Egypt. Stop doing that. So here we go to the modern day. Guys, if I had my way, I would take a wrecking crew and I would tear down every single temple across the planet of the earth, as well as every single modern building with this name on it. I would tear it down and I would burn it in the sight of all the people. And every person that, that worked there and every person that funded it through Congress would be a public hanging. This is, this is 100% child sacrifice. They even patterned their building after the ancient ziggurats. It really, really upsets me. So this is uh, this is what they do there. As no wonder she's throwing up that that uh, pyramid above her head. 
Planned Parenthood guys. Did you guys know that the actual double P within their little logo is the actual eye of Molek, of the Al Molek? Did you guys know that? Same ones that the elites the of the world, even presidents, go to this little bohemian grove and worship a Molek. Same God. Same God. Molek, Baal, same thing. That's weird. It skipped over really quick. That's strange. Um, here's modern architecture. Do you guys recognize anything? This is a building in Houston. To me, a lot of people look at this and go, oh, that's really interesting architecture. I actually love architecture. I thought I think it's fascinating. Um, when I was in high school, as a junior in high school, I actually entered an architecture contest and tried to design this amphitheater. This right here, I don't know what you guys, I mean, the idea of an architect is he's trying to present something. He's trying to speak something through the actual building process. This right here is a modern building, which is the facade of the ancient world sticking through it. It's imagine King Kong climbing the building and ripping off the outside veneer. And then boom, beneath it, you've got what you see at the top, an ancient temple, specifically an ancient ziggurat temple because this is literally the architect showing you the modern veneer of architecture is all is all built internally off of Babylon. And I'm going to I'm going to show you that through several episodes that we're going to do. This is the actual California Department of General Services. This is a government building, guys. This is a government building. Oh, by the way, they've got some they've got some unique little firmaments down below at the entrance of their building. I thought that was pretty funny. This is, an, uh, this is a big ziggurat, just like these ancient temples we saw with the flat top. What does this represent in the, in the religion of, of Babylon? And this is a government building in California. I think this was in Sacramento. Here is in another place, I think it's called Vista View, California. It's the Chet Holfield Federal Building. Same design, a little bit different, but same same overall design. Did you guys, many people don't, don't really know what this building looks like. Here's a ziggurat. It's the actual Fort Knox. And it says Boyan Depository. Guys, they, they could have built this building in so many better ways to be a defense if they really wanted it to. That was an intentional build. You guys, you guys know James Bond? Ever wonder why James Bond is going to be made forever? constantly being pushed on you he actually i think it was one of the last few mo movies that actually went into this building in the movie this is in london it's the mi6 is 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 the nickname if you will for the british secrets intelligence service and this is the same quote-unquote service that the james bond character uh worked for works for i should say the fictional character this is a real building it's just a mixture of ziggurats and it's literally has a nickname Babylon on Thames. It's the Thames River that it's built right next to. And this is literally the nickname that this building has in London. Babylon on Thames. They know what they're doing. They 100% know what they're doing. How about modern architecture? You guys, you might be saying, but Sean, these are just representations. These are just buildings. These are just representations of like, you know, just an artist's idea of just finding a, a unique design. It doesn't mean anything. Okay, well, here's a modern building that was built in the last five years in India that's literally a temple of a ziggurat that's in active use today. Here's a Chinese apartment complex built like a ziggurat. Massive one, actually. This one's crazy, guys. This one right here is, we're going back to Japan, okay? This is actually a modern building built like a ziggurat, as you can see from the exterior and the top. It's got the flat top. But it actually has a Tower of Babel in the very middle of it. <laughs> and an actual pointed pyramid at the bottom of it. This has got all three just pushed right into the same concept. It's got the pointed pyramid, the Tower of Babel, and the ziggurat all at the same just insane oh you want to go to dubai 
one of the wealthiest countries in the Middle East, maybe the wealthiest city in the world. They actually have a water park built after a Mayan ziggurat. Does that sound, does that sound like a good place to go have fun? If you have no clue about your history, you don't, you don't know what originally was happening in these. How interesting, huh? Oh, I think it's, <laughs> kind of hilarious to me the actual uh, symbolism here of the the person going down the water slide from the very top he then goes down through the ground like he's actually going into the earth because they would kill people at the top and of course their soul would go to sheol after that very interesting symbolism but you may be saying sean that's just a silly theme park right that's just someone trying to you know exploit ancient cultures and put it in dubai where it's like a novelty for people in the middle east because you know they don't go to south america and Okay, how about this building? Here's literally a ziggurat inside of a pointed pyramid. Here's your ziggurat. Here's your pointed pyramid. Guys, it gets even worse. There's an obelisk right next to it. I'm going to talk about obelisks and domes next uh, next week. And you've even got the, the uh, palm trees, which was the actual tree of Osiris, because supposedly he was born under a palm tree. If you want more... How about there's an actual pointed pyramid right behind it, a few blocks behind it. And there's even another one next to a dome, a few blocks behind that. There's even a third one further back. I just didn't want to take the time to make another circle. And there's a Tower of Babel representation with the Burj Khalifa in the far distant skyline of Dubai. Here's the Temple of Osiris, literally the Temple of Osiris, guys. This is the Temple of Osiris in Egypt. Look at the look at the, the the design. Here it is in front of this ziggurat inside of a pointed pyramid next to an obelisk. It's literally part of the awning for the entryway drive-through. The Temple of Osiris. Oh, by the way, this little building in the far distant background with the ball on top. I'm going to get to that in future episodes when we talk about um, Babylon future series. Right towards the end of this series. This is very significant. I'm going to have to come back to it later, though. we got a lot more ground to cover before we get to that point. This is in Guatemala. Tico, Guatemala. Revelation 18.24 says, And in her, that's in Babylon, Mother Babylon, was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints and all who have been slain on the earth. And all who have been slain on the earth. The entire world practiced the religion of Babylon. Like I said, they just had new languages now. They just, instead of calling Satan Zeus, they called him Quetzalcoatl. They just had new lang new language. Hopefully, this has been something that um, sparks some thoughts, sparks some ideas, to show you that the high places are everywhere in ancient history. Some people may be asking, well, Sean, these are just architectural representations of buildings. They're not really sat doing human sacrifice in the tops of these buildings. I mean, you, you showed us like government buildings from California. Like there's no, you know, government worker out there in a white shirt and a bad tie, like sacrificing humans on top of the building. No, of course not. They went underground with those practices. The symbolism and the religion is still there. That's why I showed you Planned Parenthood. Do you guys know that abortion is accepted in all the countries around the world? Oh, almost all of them. It's a huge practice. In the United States alone, 60 million children have been have been aborted since the 1960s. In Russia, it's even bigger. They have lots of abortions in Russia. Lots. All over the world, guys. Child sacrifice is, is uh, practiced on a regular basis. They took it away from the ceremony, and I'll explain in just a minute why, but they took away from the ceremony of being on top of a, of a building and you know doing a big thing on a high place and making a big show of it. And they took it to a more sterilized surgical thing that now the government can fund quietly so that even the good people don't realize their taxpaying dollars are going towards that, right? The people that would disagree with that practice, they, they instituted it as opposed to making it an overt religion out in the public. And I suggest it's because of Jesus Christ. 
It's because of Yeshua of Nazareth and the movement that he started, which changed the the Near Eastern world, right? The Middle Eastern world of the ancient days of the first century. It changed everything because he had there was a growing movement of people coming to 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 Yeshua. So mass converts were happening all throughout the Middle East. They were living in the in the ancient world where all these practices were still taking place on a regular basis. The Greek temples, the Roman temples, the temple to Zeus and Pergamum. All of it was still taking place overtly. But you have a couple hundred years of mass converse, conversion to believing in Yeshua of Nazareth as the Messiah and adopting the behavior of the Torah, which does not do human sacrifice. So this became such an issue that the ruling empire of the day, which was Rome, decided, well, okay, well, quote unquote, can't beat them, join them, right? So they use this different tactic of, well, we'll just institutionalize their belief system. We'll put a veneer over it of what we now know as Catholicism. We can, they'll still carry on their practices. Those practices just went underground. Instead, they were trying to obfuscate or uh, the actual faith of believers. But they could tell that the actual overt practices of doing this out in the open couldn't persist. So you had a ripple effect from the Middle East outward over time where these practices slowly were phased out because what happens in Acts 2, you have all the people that were all the Jews that came in for the feast of, Pas of uh, Shavuot from, from all the different regions that are listed in Acts 2. And they went back to their regions, spreading their new understanding of Jesus as their high priest of the covenant and how the Redeemer had come and salvation has been secured for us. Believe in him so you can have eternal life. What a wonderful message. People were coming to Christ all over the place, but that took time and that ripple effect to change the world of that day. So that's why you would still have across the pond, so to speak, and over across the Atlantic and then in the quote unquote Americas, you would still have practices going on for hundreds of years um, with these temples because it just took time for that message to get everywhere to, to, to address these things and say to these people, stop doing this stuff. It's bad. And so, and in some places actually have, you know, battles and wars to get them to stop doing it. So a veneer of goodness was washed over the, the governments of the world. The practices still stayed. They just were implemented in different ways. They were underground for a long time, but in the last in the 20th century, the last hundred years, they were made institutionalized through mass abortion. Because now it's under the guise of medicine and science and healthcare and how it's actually okay, right? Because you've already had a couple uh, several decades of prepping people with an evolutionary mindset to help them think that you know they don't need God, and so therefore science is God. So we need to listen to the scientists, and the scientists say abortion's okay. So therefore, it gets institutionalized across the world. Practices of Babylon are still here. All the symbolism of Babylon is still here. We're literally still living in Babylon. It's just just has a bunch of different brandings. It's like um, it's like that old story about the guy who owns the Taco Bueno and the Taco Mayo, and he and he opens them up across the street from each other so they can compete with each other. And he he runs ads in the paper, having a, a competition and advertising war against each other. But he owns both of them, so he's going to win either way. And the people choose sides. The people think, "Oh, I, I like Taco Bueno better." And the others, "Oh, I like Taco Mayo better." And so then they choose sides. Right? He's winning either way. He owns both of them. So the enemy just took all the people that were dispersed from the from Babel, went back to their prospective lands. He rebranded. They kept the same practices. He just rebrands the look of it according to that people group. And as times change, he just changes the rebranding. He changes the, the overall look of it, keeps the practices of it. And that's why when the Messiah returns, these people are called to the carpet. These people are dragged before Yeshua, the kings of the earth, Satan, the Antichrist, which is the beast, the false prophet. They're literally will have to look him in the eye and be sentenced to punishment. So this is a, they've got it coming is, is an understatement. So guys, when people say come out of Babylon, I'm sitting there going, guys, where are you going to go? 
sorry to sound like that, but where are you really going to go? There's nowhere to, there's nowhere to come out of in this day. You, it's a, it's about the practices. It's about, you know, that statement in Revelation 18, you know, verse four to come out of Babylon, my people, it doesn't mean to go off in the wilderness somewhere. You're st the whole world is Babylon right now, but I'm going to explain specifically about mother Babylon in future episodes. But as far as the system, the practices that are implemented throughout all the cultures and nations, it's all Babylon and it's all metaphorical Egypt as well, which was an extension of Babylon. I mean, that's why our dollar bills have the LC and I on it and a 13 stepped pyramid. So I just, hopefully you guys understand it's about to come out of Babylon is, is to come to a conversion moment, to come away from those practices and adopt the behavior of Yeshua of Nazareth, which is to adopt the behavior of the creator himself, right? The father is what the father's behavior is what Yeshua uh, emulated. It's what he exemplified for us. So when we practice the behavior of Yeshua, we're actually practicing the behavior of the actual creator. And that's why he says things will go well for us if we do that. So this is where that's the coming out of the system. So where you go into Yahweh's system, you go into the creator system, which is good for you.